Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The uh, Honourable Prime Minister, the Honourable uh, Leader of Opposition, Honourable Deputy Prime Ministers, the Attorney General, Honourable Ministers and Assistant Ministers, Honourable Members of Parliament, and all our viewers watching on television and the internet. I rise today to fully support the Coalition Government's budget for the next financial year as announced by the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honourable Professor Biman Prasad, on the 28th of June in this House. I wish to commend our leader, the Honourable Prime Minister, sir, for his leadership in steering us to a new Fiji, a freer Fiji, which over the last 18 months is a Fiji that has enabled our people their basic freedoms, their freedom of speech, their freedom of assembly, their freedom of movement, a more secure and sustainable and stable Fiji. I thank the Honorable Prasad and his team for their hard work to deliver a budget that realizes the same goals. I congratulate the Attorney General on his appointment and a well-delivered speech and timely reminder of his core role as Chief Legal Advisor to Government and to uphold the rule of law. I congratulate my sister minister, Honorable Alitia Mbanivalu, for being appointed Minister for Fisheries and Forestry, a welcome addition of another woman to cabinet. And I thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his continued commitment to promote women's national leadership, no matter where we sit in this house. I thank Honorable Ravu for his commitment and service to our people during his tenure. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, I wish to respond to the repeated criticism against government from the opposition members and civil society leaders that the social welfare allowances are not enough to sustain a recipient given the cost of living. Yes, yes. I wish to issue a reminder. It is not the sole responsibility of government to financially sustain the welfare of our social welfare recipients, Honorable Speaker. It is first and foremost the responsibility of the family. I want to say this in Ita, okay, Honorable Speaker. Government merely supplements this responsibility in recognition of the service of our older persons that have given to Fiji and supplementary support for our most vulnerable, which are our pure, our poor, our children, and our disabled. For those that truly need more support, Honorable Speaker, who are abandoned by their family, then this is done on a case-by-case -case basis. But having said that, Honorable Speaker, this government continues to prioritize the support services to our most vulnerable. An increase in budget, Honorable Speaker, last year for our social welfare recipients. It hadn't been done for years by the previous government. And then, of course, this year, Honorable Speaker, in this budget, there are two major changes I wish to highlight. And I thank Honorable Sachidanan for um, highlighting it. Number one, the transport assistance scheme, Honorable Speaker. This was previously known as the bus fare assistance scheme that has been supporting around 48,000 beneficiaries. This has been allocated $13.4 million to subsidize the cost of travel for older persons over 70 and persons with disabilities. To enable beneficiaries to subsidize additional modes of transport beyond the public buses, the program will be renamed, as I mentioned, the Transport Assistance Scheme. From the 1st of August, 2024, our social pensioners over 70 years old and disability recipients on the Disability Allowance Scheme will no longer be on the bus fare scheme, but will receive transport assistance in cash of $25 a month. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, the establishment of a child well-being center. Subject to consultation of line ministries and cabinet approval, this initiative will see our children at risk who are facing some form of addiction or trauma, including majority of our street kids, to be rehabilitated trained and integrated back into society. An allocation of $250,000 has been made in this budget 
for the renovations of the Bunyarewa Bible School in Serua, donated by the Methodist Church of Fiji for this purpose. An initial commitment from the People's Republic of China to fund the program component shows the confidence in our government in efforts to effectively tackle the drug and trauma issues faced by our children. We hope more bilateral and donor partners will come on board in these efforts as well. Other programs to note, Honorable Speaker, the Ministry has been allocated $200,000 under the Welfare Graduation Program. We aim to increase the skills of our beneficiaries through training programs and link them to dignified and decent work which matches their skills and experience that will enable them to start jobs or find employment opportunities. Under this reform agenda, Honorable Speaker, the Ministry has engaged two staff in the newly established Welfare Graduation Unit within the Department of Social Protection, who will be working in close partnership with employers of vocational institutions, especially Pacific Polytech, Honorable Speaker, and I hear the other side of the House constantly berating the increase in funding for Pacific Polytech, but they are coming to the table in order to provide these vocational training for our people on social welfare and also our women, Honorable Speaker. And of course, working with the Ministry of Employment on this important program, which aims to not only support the long-term well-being and resilience of working age beneficiaries, but also aim to begin addressing the labor shortage in our economy. Honorable Speaker, the Department of Children, we're building on the Department of Children. It was allocated budget this year, and it'll continue into next year. We now have a director of children, a principal child welfare officer, a welfare officer, and an admin officer. Honorable Speaker, the introduction of the Child Care and Protection Bill and the Child Justice Bill, Honorable Speaker, is well into the legislative consultation process. I wish to thank all members of this House for your unanimous support for these bills. And we look forward to the continued support of this House when the bills finally come for debate. Honorable Speaker, the Department of Women, I'm honored to once again highlight the crucial importance of gender equality and women's rights, which is fundamental to the advancement and sustainable development of our Fiji. I'm pleased to highlight we continue to make good progress to align all government agencies, ministries, and sectors to the shared responsibility of empowering our women. I applaud the Ministry of Finance for its leadership in advancing the implementation of gender responsive budgeting. In the budget, Honorable Speaker, the Department of Women further affirms this commitment by an allocation of $4.34 million for its operations and programs. Honorable Speaker, in addition, the Women Economic Empowerment Grants continue to assist our women who wish to venture into business. Honorable Speaker, I want to um, thank the Junkau Technology Demonstration Center staff for the pilot project in McCoy, which is a pilot project in our urban areas, covering approximately 80 women to set up backyard gardens in this large peri-urban area. Since last week, the women of Delai Valelevu have shown interest, and we hope this initiative for our women will realize the successes already enjoyed by the Anaita Siri Women's Group and Reo Disabled Women's Group in their backyard farming of mushrooms and related easy cash crops. Honorable Speaker, we continue to work with our development partners, and I wish to thank the Government of Australia, the Government of New Zealand, the World Bank, and UNFPA, Honorable Speaker, for coming on board in their continued support for our National Action Plan to prevent gender-based violence, the development, continued development of our Women's Economic Empowerment National Action Plan, and of course, Honorable Speaker, there is a critical issue of the technology-facilitated gender-based violence that we are focusing on, including a gender analysis of the online safety legislation and the landscape. Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, I'd like to express support for the budget presented in Parliament. This is a budget for the people, with diligent efforts to promote stability in the management of our finances, security for our future, and sustainability of our debt for our children and their children. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Vinaba Levu, Danyabad, and Fexia. Vinaba Levu, Honorable Linda Tumbuya, for your contribution.